Welcome back to 630 Point of View. With me tonight, the host of News and Views, Joel Heitkamp. First off, congratulations to Heidi and obviously you, her brother. Incredible race. You guys deserve a lot of credit. Well, thank you, Chris. It, it was a long night, a very long night. I saw you up on stage in Bismarck, and you're like, stay with us. We're going to rally the troops. They here's, didn't leave. Here's they, what I they didn't know. leave. They hung out. I, I want to get some behind the scenes from you right now, some exclusive stuff. When in the night, because you and I were texting back and forth yeah. at times, I said, I think this thing's called fairly early. Not any credit to me. I was going off the Secretary of State site. You and Heidi, obviously, very savvy politically. How early did you know this was over? And at, be honest. At 1030. At 1030. No. <laughs> about I think a, earlier than that, a, don't you? Actually, when I, when I saw the numbers and they weren't inflated in Williams County, which told me that they weren't bussing in oil workers and the oil companies weren't saying, go vote, you know, here's 50 bucks kind of an attitude. And then when I saw some of the numbers coming in from the east and I saw the percentage of win for Heidi, that's when I knew that Burley County, which I knew she wasn't going to win, and, and I knew what those percentages might be, that's when I knew the race was Were over. Were you with Heidi when you both figured out, hey, this thing's over? Never saw Heidi until I introduced her on stage. So all night long. First thing when you saw her and you knew it was over, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you at least talked on the phone or texted, what was the first thing that she said to you? Actually, I didn't. Really? I, I didn't. I didn't talk to her all night long. I, I talked to her campaign. Are you that redhead manager. stepbrother? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the thing about Heidi at times like this is uh, too much information, you know, a precinct here, a precinct there. What we didn't want to do was put Heidi in a position where she's on a roller coaster. Because you sat here and you worked all night last night, as we did at, at KFGO, and what you found was, was that there was never a time she was behind. There was never, never. a time that she fell behind. And that's the only message I kept telling people, <laughs> convey to her. You're not behind. It's going to bounce, but you're not behind. I want to get in the weeds a little bit here, and I want you to interpret these numbers I'm going to share with you Kay. because... I've tried, and it's interesting. So Mitt Romney beats Barack Obama by 20 points. Uh, Kevin Kramer beats Pam Gullison by 13. Jack Dalrymple beats Ryan Taylor by 29. Rick Berg loses by one. That's first. Then you go to Cass County, you think, okay, it's his home county. The guy's going to do okay. He loses by 13 points there. Then you get into his legislative district, which he was there for 25 years, and loses that by, what, seven points, six points. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret that? Well, I interpret it this way. First off, Cass County is getting to be a very diverse county. No, that's, that's just there. Uh, and Cass County, four years ago, voted for Barack Obama and almost did last night. Uh, if you look at Grand Forks County, almost did again last night for Barack Obama. So for Republicans to just take for granted those counties and not work those counties, if you look at Rick Berg's tra Rick travels, he really focused on Western North but Dakota. He, you're not taking this for granted when you got Romney up by uh, 20, Kramer wins by 13, Dalrymple by 29. I mean, you're not. No, no, no. My point is, I'm, I'm focusing on the High Camp Berg race. Right. And I'm saying where you campaign. If I'm Rick Berg, I didn't need to be in Williston. I didn't need to be in Bismarck. I needed to be up and down the Red River Valley. <laughs> the problem with Rick always was, and, and it remained here in the hot box. He never did come on News and Views. He didn't like being in the Valley because that's where the media is. And media asks questions. Well, the other thing I kept hearing, the rumblings obviously today from different Republicans, is that he ran a Washington campaign. Yeah. He, and, I, and I think one of the things I really want to give kudos to, to North Dakotans is that we've got, you know, when I would travel the country and I've lived a lot of different places, I would tell people I'm from North Dakota, like, oh, yeah, one of them there in North Dakota Hicks. But I think we've got great gut instincts. And people know mm -hmm. When it's authentically North Dakota, or when maybe there's some, I'll just say Washington D.C. stuff coming in, just your comments on that. Well, Rick Berg's always the last one to come in the room and the first one to leave. He's always the one with his back standing in the wall. He's never the guy that walks around and enjoys going table to table. He might do it because that's part of the job, but he doesn't like walking around and basically doing what Kevin Kramer is very, very good at. What Heidi Heitkamp is very, very good at. What Bill Clinton did, it, when he worked that Civic Center, you saw him. He wasn't leaving till every hand was shook. That's not Rick Berg. That's not Rick Berg. And it never really was Rick Berg. When you look at the Eastern Seaboard, every single county went to Heidi. How much of an impact is that the Goldmark stuff that you guys ran? Well, it might be. I mean, it might be some of it because I had mothers calling me very upset, saying, Joel, tell Heidi she's on to something here. I went and cleaned my son's apartment. We never got our deposit back. They were mad. And they really didn't feel that he was very forthcoming in his relationship with Goldmark. 
I really felt he threw his partners under the bus. I really do. He he should have took a whole different approach when it came to Goldmark. But I do think Goldmark was part of that. Also, I hated the softball ad. I hated the softball ad. She swung too early. I'm an old All softball player. Right, you know player. my next question when oh. you bring it up. You got to stare in the camera. You got to give us the wink. Heidi's yeah. just getting started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, but you know what? That ad worked. I know. Uh, that ad worked. It really did because it showed her for what she is, which is one of all of us. Last thing I want to make a comment on, $16 million spent on this yeah. U.S. Senate campaign. Heidi wins with 160,000 votes, $100 per vote in yeah. North Dakota. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Wow. And, and, and her speech last night, the one thing she said that resonated with everybody the most is she looked at them all and she said, I told you. This wasn't going to be an auction. It was going to be an election. It's a good line. Yep. It that was, was a really good line. Good that sounded like a Bill Clinton line she may have stole at some point. <laughs> Stay with us. We're going to get back to any other shockers maybe across the state of North Dakota that Joel saw. Also, I really want to take a look at the electoral map that took place last night in the president's race, some other Senate seats that were lost, and some House seats that say, wait a second, does the GOP need sort of a Phoenix scenario here and a rebirth with what happened after last night? We'll get Joel's thoughts on that and much more. Stay with us right here on 630 Point of View. Welcome back to 630 Point of View with us tonight. A host of news and views, Joel Heitkamp. Joel, thanks for being here again. Yeah. During the break, you said, hey, Chris, I definitely want to talk about the Native American vote yeah. as well. Tessa Gould texted me throughout the night. She said, Chris, we've had record turnouts with Native Americans. Was that the tipping point in your Sure opinion? it was. Uh, it certainly was a big part of it. Uh, and, it and it's really kind of a proud mm -hmm. moment for the Heitkamp campaign because the Native Americans turning out in record force and getting record numbers out to vote for Heidi really did push this to another level. I want to ask you about that. I had Tex Hall on my radio show a while back and was visiting with him, and I think he talked about uh, Spirit Lake. It was one of the reservations. I don't remember specifically. He said, Chris, we've had 70% unemployment there now for, I mean, years and years and years. I said, Tex, why do you guys continue then to vote Democrat if you continue to have that kind of unemployment? He really didn't have an answer. He was like, I don't know, Chris, maybe we should change our vote. So why do they continue to vote Democrat even with those kind of statistics on the reservation? First off, I think they vote for people that are their friends and that actually care about them. If there's one thing that if I were Rick Berg, I'd look back and say, God, I should have done that, is actually show up on the reservation. He never I showed agree. up on one. Kurt Luger was on my radio show today. Kurt Luger, uh, a great leader in, in the Native community. And he said, you know what? Congressman Berg never came to the reservations once. He said, we know who our friends are, and that matters. Let's talk about Senator Conrad. Senator Dorgan uh, talks now with Obama's second term. Senator Conrad may become yeah. Secretary of Ag. He's sort of poo-pooing it, saying, no way. What do you think? He said on my show today he's really not interested. Now, if the president... He's looking at the commissioner of the Major League it, Baseball, it, isn't he? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think he still dreams about pitching in Major League Baseball. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, if there is one of those two you want to put your money on, my guess it's... Uh, Secretary of Energy with Senator Dorgan. I think Senator Conrad is really in a place in his life where he does want to explore other options, just step away from public <laughs> life for a while. But know this, when the President of the United States calls, it's awful hard for anybody to it's, say It's no. hard not to pick yeah. up the phone, but as I mentioned to you the other night, when he was here live in studio, I said, Chris, I'm just, I, I'm excited for this thing to be over. It's time for me to move on to a new chapter. Let's talk about President Barack Obama's second term the electoral map, 303 to 206. I mentioned right. this to Robert. The only swing state that Romney won was North Carolina. Yeah. I'm curious, in your opinion, what the message is, because also I look at Alan West getting knocked off. Michelle, Brock, Michelle Bachman, a Republican presidential candidate, barely wins her congressional district. Yeah. The, the message is this, 1-800-JEB-BUSH, 1-800-MARCO-RUBIO. Uh, one of those two, I don't care but find somebody who actually knows how to speak to Latinos, find somebody who actually understands and appreciates uh, African Americans, find somebody who doesn't want an exclusive party, they want an inclusive party. Quit doing photo ops with Jan Brewer. That's the answer. And until the Republican Party realizes that America and the face of America has changed and they need to be more inclusive, like Ronald Reagan was, quite frankly. And here's the other big change, Chris, that's happened in our lifetime. No longer do women take their direction of where they're going to vote from either the church or the husband. It's not happening anymore. So with females being talked about, let me ask this, because I said probably, I don't know, a year or nine months ago, uh, she should have been the VP choice. Do you think Condoleezza Rice makes the difference in this race? If she would have 
taking on the VP role? I think she makes a huge difference. I, I think that when you put Paul Ryan out there and every rally you go to, you're getting beat up over the very budget you knew that he had forwarded. Uh, I mean, think about that. They put him in hiding. That, they, they Sarah Palin him at the end. They really did. He completely. Yeah, I mean, you didn't he even know like where he was. Casper the ghost. Exactly. And, and first off, if you're going to pick somebody you think is a swing state, deliver the swing but state. This is Check the, out the numbers in Wisconsin. This is the other thing I want to ask you. As you look at what happened in Rick Berg's home district, then I yeah. looked at a little bit bigger picture. I said Mitt Romney didn't win in Massachusetts, didn't think he would, didn't carry New Hampshire. Then you've got Priebus, the GOP chairman from Wisconsin, plus Ryan, and they still can't carry Wisconsin. Now, I know Wisconsin's the birth of unions, but still, Governor Walker, strong Republican, why can't those two guys deliver Wisconsin? Oh, because. First off, Wisconsin. <laughs> no, I'll give you a perfect example. Tammy Baldwin wins last night the United States Senate seat in Wisconsin. Period. Plain and simple. She goes out there. Now, this is the first open lesbian candidate ever to run for the United States Senate. She's got that. She's the fact she's a woman. She <laughs> runs against Tommy Thompson, very popular governor in his time. But you know what? They left it all behind. They keep talking to middle-aged white men, and they already have them. They already have them. Learn to speak to everybody, or they're going to be a minority party for a long, long time. I want to give you the last word. Anything else about the elections, about Heidi, Senator Conrad's retirement, anything else you want to share? No, I, I think from my side of the aisle, Chris, uh, a foundation has been laid with Ryan Taylor, Pam Gullison. I hope they don't put away the signs. I hope they keep the signs. Because if Kevin Kramer taught us any one thing, he taught us that Quentin Burdick was right. Be persistent. Don't be afraid to lose. Put your name back on a ballot. Now more people know who Pam Gullison and Ryan Taylor are. They'd look better on the ballot next time. Does Kevin Kramer change the face of the ND GOP with what he did just going through the primary? Yes. I, I, we've got him here on Friday, Kevin Kramer. I'm excited to visit with him about that and the move he made. And is it going to build a bigger tent, as you mentioned, for the Can GOP? Can I just add one other thing? Please. Kevin Kramer is always accessible. Always. Oh, you, know. you call him, he's sitting in this chair. I call him, he's on my radio show. That's the way you get to where Kevin Kramer finds himself today in Congress. And I said to him, I said, hey, okay, Kevin, we can have you in Bismarck. Do be a like, No, Chris, I want to be in studio live with you. I appreciate the access. Joel, always yep. great. Again, congratulations. When you see Thank Heidi, you. please tell her face to face. Congratulations. Hopefully we can get her on uh, the hot box soon again. Robert, back to you, my friend.